in my view, this is about confidence the American people have in their government and whether or not their government is doing everything they can to protect their privacy. Uh, it's not about health care at all. We could be talking about any other website that the federal government has. And we know the GAO came out and reported thousands of breaches across the federal government. So to argue that this website is going to be secure and that no, nothing is going to happen, I think, is a false argument because it is going to be breached. There is going to be information stolen. Uh, I think from my perspective, uh, I was a medical doctor before. Uh, I think when you throw in the health care part of it, it becomes very personal for people. I mean, I understand, you know, people out there in my district are concerned about the Department of Defense being hacked, maybe a few people. But when you start talking about potential for information that they perceive, whether it's real or whether it's perceived, is personal information, I think all of us in hearings like this and across government, uh, in, the, in the administration, in both political parties, need to recognize the fact we need to do whatever we can to regain the confidence in the American people that we are protecting their personal information as best we can. Even though I do recognize the website itself doesn't have that on there, it does have portals that people that are smart can act, potentially access that. And this is actually one of the biggest problems in electronic medical records that we have. My medical practice established an electronic medical record in 2005. Um, I love electronic medical records. But there are two issues. There's, of course, security issues, and then there's compatibility issues about getting medical information across different types of electronic medical records. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's unfortunate that uh, all of you are, are somewhat subjected to a national discussion about health care, and I appreciate all of you trying to confine your comments to the security aspects and not the, the larger national debate about how we provide quality, affordable health care to all our citizens, which I think is a goal we all have, and certainly as a medical doctor, I have. Um, so it really doesn't matter if healthcare.gov is a low propensity target by some hackers out there. In the minds of the American people, when you mention their health care, this is the biggest target in the federal government in their minds. Whether that's real or perceived doesn't really make a difference. So, Mr. Krush, I mean, you, you know, what would, I mean, the GAO came out with this uh, report, as you know, in 2012, uh, saying there are 22,156 data breaches data breaches, 4,000 at CMS alone. And you, you have a relationship with CMS, so, I mean, you have to recognize that, that we can't make the case that, this, that any website is going to be secure uh, to try to make a political argument to prove, to prove that the way we're managing health care is the right way to go. I mean, that's not the discussion, is it? The discussion is, how do we protect information? You'd have to agree with that, wouldn't you? I absolutely agree with that. I, I will just say that um, I agree with that, and with the um, idea that the process that we use, um, you know, to secure the data on federal information systems is just very rigorous, and that's that's my complete argument here. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I I think where, when it comes to the confidence, I know we've discussed out, you know, third party people uh, out there looking at this, and and I'll be honest with you, I'm a member of Congress, and I did. I have no idea whether there's a third party person out there, and there, there obviously is, looking at this. So our charge is to get that to the American people, whether it's because if it's, if the American people don't know, and I can tell you as a political person, trying to get a message across to a broad, to 700,000 people is difficult, and that's just 700,000 people. Um, we need to do better getting the information out that there are actually people that aren't in government that are looking at this to preserve people's personal records. That's, that's my view. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, how do, how do we do that? Well, I think if you look at, at the broader picture here, and not just healthcare.gov, but just in the federal space, you know, end-to-end -end testing, you know, proactive security measures, things that, that are definitely outlined as being best-of-breed security practices need to be performed. And I'm not saying that NIST doesn't have those. It's just they're loosely followed. You know, to comply with FISMA is not necessarily a rigorous process. 
So what I have to say to that is, you know, we have to focus on putting security in the very forefront, in the very beginning stages of when we hire a contractor or we go after another organization um, through the entire process of that. Healthcare.gov is a prime example of the failures of being able to implement security in a rigorous manner or in a process that, that includes security throughout the entire life cycle. And if you do that, you have a better product. You have something that, that people can stand by and say, listen, we're doing our reasonable amount of assurance here that we're protecting your information, not just, you know, um, kind of slapping it together and throwing it out there. My time has expired. I'd like to say let's all of us work together to regain the confidence of the American people.